From London, we present the Francis Durbridge serial, Paul Temple and the Geneva Mystery. Episode 5, A Surprise for Mrs. Milbourne. Mr. Temple, I told you my husband was alive, didn't I? You said you thought he was alive. Well, I was right. He is. How do you know he's alive, Mrs. Milbourne? I've spoken to him. You've actually spoken to your husband? Yes, this morning in London. The telephone bell rang and the operator said there was a personal call for me from Geneva. It was Carl. Are you sure? I'm absolutely sure. He, he sounded tense and worried, but it was Carl. What did he say? He told me to catch a plane and meet him here at this restaurant tonight at nine o'clock. But it's, it's now quarter past ten, Mrs. Miller. Yes, I know. I've been waiting since 8.30. About half an hour ago, I decided to try and find you and Mrs. Temple. I telephoned four hotels before I found you. Have you told your brother about the phone call? No, he left for St. Moritz yesterday by train, before the fog lifted. You might have got in touch with him here in Geneva. But Morris isn't in Geneva. Oh, yes, he is. We met him on the train coming here. He said he had some business here before he went on to St. Moritz. But he told me he was going straight there. I can't imagine why he... Uh, Mr. Temple? Oh, I'm, I'm so sorry. I was just looking at someone. Steve, isn't that Vince over there? Where? With the dumb blonde. Oh, yes, it is. Is he a friend of yours? Yes, Vince Langham, the film director. Oh? Curious enough, he's come over here to see Julia Carrington. He wants to interest her in that book I spoke to you about, Too Young to Die. But I thought Julia Carrington had retired. She has, but Vince is the persistent type. I'd better go and have a word with him or he'll be bouncing over here. Excuse me, Mrs Milbourne, I won't be a minute. Hello, Vince. Oh, hello, Paul. Is this what you call strictly business? Uh, I'm trying to get the local colour, old boy. Yes, I think you've got it. I, um, I can't introduce you. She doesn't speak a word of English. She doesn't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I came over to wish you luck with Julia Carrington tomorrow. I have a feeling you'll need it. What do you mean? I saw her this evening. She denies having spoken to you. What? I have a nasty feeling she won't see you tomorrow, Vince. Oh, it's that secretary of hers... He's made her change her mind, the little creep. All I know is... All I know is she made an appointment with me and she's damn well going to keep it. Well, I hope you're right. Good luck, Vince. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to shoot my mouth off like that. Well, thanks for the tip. I'll know how to play it tomorrow morning anyway. Paul, it's after 12. Don't you think we ought to be making a move? Well, that's up to Mrs. Milbourne. No. No, your wife's right, Mr. Temple. It's obvious Carl's not coming, or he'd have been here by now. Excuse me, madame. Are you Mrs. Milbourne? Yes. You are wanted on the telephone, madame. Oh, oh who is he calling? The gentleman didn't give his name, sir. He's calling from St. Moritz. Where can I take it? There's a box over there, madame. Oh, Mr. Temple, please come with me. Yes, yes, of course. Wait here, Steve. Yes, all right. This way, madame. It's all right. I'll close the door. Hello? Hello? Who is that? Oh, this is Mrs. Milbourne speaking. Margaret, this is Carl. Oh, Carl. Where are you? I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry, Margaret, but I had to come out to St. Moritz. Oh, Carl, what's this all about? When am I going to see you? Margaret, I want you to go back to London. What? I'll get in touch with you there as soon as I can. But, Carl, you just can't leave me like this. You, you've got to tell me why. Carl. Carl, are you there? He's gone. Was it your husband? I think so. It, it wasn't a very good line, but... Oh, yes, of course it was Carl. He wants me to go home. Are you going? Oh, I don't know. I... I just don't know what to do, Mr. Temple. <laughs> More coffee here, Nida? Uh, no, thank you, Mrs. Temple. Oh, I had that phone call traced, Temple. It was from a phone box. Ah, I thought as much. You know, I can hardly credit that Milbourne is alive. After all, Mrs. Milbourne and her brother identified the body. Yes, but it was badly disfigured. Even so. 
Uh, tell me, is Mrs. Milbourne going to St. Moritz with you this morning? She keeps changing her mind, poor woman, but I think she'll come with us in the end. What time do we get there? Not until late tonight, about uh, 11.15. 23, 20, to be exact. And don't be surprised if you come across two friends of yours. Friends of ours? Miss Carrington and Danny Clayton. Are they going to St. Moritz? Uh, yes, uh, Julia Carrington has a villa there. But uh, how do you know they're going there? Well, I went to see Miss Carrington last night after I'd seen you and Mrs. Temple. She was making a great fuss of her secretary, mm -hmm. who, by the way, seemed to have made a very quick recovery. She suggested they had two or three weeks in St. Moritz, and Mr. Clayton jumped at the idea. Mm. Did Clayton help you at all? Could he throw any light on the accident? Well, he was cooperative, but there was very little he could tell us. Oh. Uh, where are you staying in St. Moritz? At the Grisson House Hotel. Ah, good. I'll tell a colleague of mine, Hans Schmidt, to contact oh, you. Thank you. And I'll send him the photographs you gave me of Carl Milborn. Thank you. Oh, and there's something else I'd like you to do for me, if it isn't too much trouble. Why, of course. When you get back to your office, perhaps you'd be kind enough to phone our mutual friend, Sir Graham, and ask him if he could find out... Still shaving, Steve. I shan't be long. Good Lord, you're dressed. You're bright and early this morning. Well, I'm early. I don't know about bright. I didn't sleep very well. No, it's the altitude. You'll get used to it in a day or so. I hope so. Steve, I'm going down to that hat shop as soon as we've had breakfast, but I don't want Mrs. Milbourne tagging along. Mm -hmm. Would you take her skating or something? <laughs> she doesn't look the skating type to me. Well, then, take her up to the ski slopes and let her watch the skiing for an hour or so. Yes, all right. Ah, that'll be her now. I'll get my dressing gown on. But I thought it said we'd meet her downstairs. Good morning, Temple. Oh, hello, Lonsdale. Come in. I didn't expect you. I thought it was your sister. Good morning, Mrs. Temple. Good morning. Uh, I saw Margaret downstairs. She told me you were here. Uh, forgive me for intruding, Mrs. Temple, but I wanted to have a word with your husband. Yes, of course. I didn't know you were staying at this hotel. I didn't know you were, either. We arrived last night. Temple, Margaret's just told me about those phone calls, the one in London and the one in Geneva. Could it have been Carl on the phone? Your sister certainly seemed to think so. Then he, he really is alive after all, and he's here in St. Moritz. So it would seem. I just can't believe it. Tell me, Lonsdale, had your brother-in-law any worries, financial worries? Oh, no more than most businessmen, I imagine. At one time, his publishing firm was having a tough fight, but I understand they're well out of the wood now. So you don't think he'd be likely to, well, fake the accident and then disappear? Good heavens, no. It has happened, Mr. Lonsdale. Yes, well, I'm sure it hasn't happened in this case, Mrs. Temple. If Carl had been desperate, he'd have come to me or one of his friends. Did he ever borrow money from you? Yes, as a matter of fact, he did about six years ago. Oh, oh well, it's safe enough. I'm not worried. I say, do you mind if I join you and Margaret for breakfast? No, 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 of course not. But we'll go down, Paul, and then you can finish dressing. Yes, all right. Have you any news of your friend, Miss Sams? Frida, yes, I'm afraid the news isn't too good. I thought it was just a broken leg, but she slipped a disc as well. Oh. The poor darling's in a great deal of pain. Have you seen her? Uh, not yet, but I'm going to the hospital this morning. See you downstairs, Temple. Yes, all right, I won't be long. Hello? Paul? Speaking. Uh, this is Danny. Oh, hello, Danny. How are you feeling? Well, I'm okay now, thanks to you. <laughs> Have you started those swimming lessons yet? Well, not yet, but they're on the agenda. Good. Where are you speaking from? I'm in San Moritz. Julia and I flew here yesterday. Flew? Yes, there's a small airport here, and Julia's got a private plane. Really? We'd like you and Steve to come out here to lunch today, if that's possible. Oh, thanks. We'd like that. Good. Well, we'll expect you about one o'clock. Oh, I better give you the address. Oh, yes. It's the Villa Serbolini. Villa Serbolini? Yeah, it's very well known. Your concierge will tell you how to get here. Take a sleigh. It's a lovely ride on a day like this. Yes, we'll do that. Good. See you later. All right. Goodbye, Danny. <laughs> right, 
Timothy, you've been holding out on me. I didn't know you could skate like that. Oh, oh. let's sit down. Uh, I'm exhausted. Uh, put this mm. rug over you. Thank you. Well, did you go to the hat shop? Yes, but it's not just a hat shop. They sell everything. Clothes, sports equipment, the lot. Oh, the sort of place where you could spend a fortune. Mm. And do you know who was spending a fortune? No. Vince Langham. I didn't know he was in St. Moritz. I thought that he... Is he following us, or are we following him? That's exactly what Vince said. But what's he doing here, Paul? Julia Carrington refused to see him in Geneva, so he followed her here. But let me tell you about the hat. Mm -hmm. I saw the manager of the shop, a pleasant little man called Cromer, and he invited me into his office. I'm delighted to meet you, Mr. Temple. Thank you. I've read several of your books. Oh, I'm glad you survived. <laughs> Mr. Croner, I'm making certain investigations, and I think you might be able to help me. I will if I can. About a month ago, a man named Carl Milbourne bought a hat from you and asked for his old hat to be posted back to his address in London. I have no knowledge of the transaction myself, but there's probably some record of it in the hat department. Do you think I could have a word with the assistant concerned? Unfortunately, that isn't possible, Mr. Temple. Uh -huh. At that time... The assistant in the hat department was an Italian girl who has since left. Mm, pity. But wait a moment. I'm beginning to recall the transaction now. Ah. The assistant came and asked me if it was possible to post your friend's hat to England. She asked me to have a word with him. I remember thinking the man looked ill and rather nervous. Mr. Croner, I'd like you to take a look at these photographs. Uh, certainly. Do you recognize the man? <laughs> I see so many people. Yes, I'm sure, but perhaps... No, I'm sorry. I couldn't say for certain that this is the man. But wait a moment. As I remember it, your friend wasn't alone. He was with a party of people. Uh, am I right? Well, it's possible, I suppose. You mean a large party? No, no, just a small group of tourists. They were all in the shop laughing and joking. Did you see them speak to him? <laughs> that I can't remember. But I certainly had the impression that he was with them. Thank you, Mr. Croner. You've been extremely helpful. Not at all. Uh, Mr. Temple, is there anything I can show you while you're here? Well, that doesn't seem to have got you very far, Paul. On the contrary. You think that Carl Milbourne was with a party of people? I think it's possible that the man who bought the hat was trying to avoid attention by tacking himself on to a group of tourists. But Mrs. Milbourne's positive that it was her husband's hat and that the note was written by him. Mrs. Milbourne's a very good actress, Steve. She always was. Are you suggesting I'm not that... suggesting anything. Good Lord, it's quarter past twelve. You'd better start changing. I've ordered a kutcher for half past. A kutcher? By Timothy, you are ignorant. Slay, dear. Oh. Slay. Excuse me, sir. Mr. Temple? Mm -hmm. There's a telephone message for you, sir. Oh, thank you. Who's it from? Danny Clayton. The lunch is off. Oh, dear. Apparently, Julia Carrington isn't well. Oh, and I was so looking forward to that sleigh ride. Well, we'll go for a ride anyway and have lunch in Pontresina. Good, that's a wonderful idea. Oh, help me off with these skates, dear. Are you warm enough, Steve? Yes, I'm fine. Oh, this is nice, isn't it? Mm. I like your kucha. <laughs> Doesn't the snow look lovely on those trees? Yes. It must have been snowing for weeks. Mm. Oh, smell the pine trees. Mm. Mm. I'll remind you of this when we get back to foggy old London. <laughs> There'll be no need to remind me. How long will it take us to get to Pontesina? Oh, you'd better ask Ferdy. He knows his horses better than I do. Ferdy? How long will it take us to Pontresina? Not very long, ma'am. I think about 20 minutes, 25, perhaps. The snow is very good. It is easy today. Oh, good. Are you hungry? You know me. I'm always hungry. <laughs> I remember the first time we went to St. Moritz. Oh! What was that? Sounded to me like a shot. It came from over there, from those trees. Oh. There's someone with a gun by that tree. Get down, Steve. Get down. <laughs> Ferdy, have you been hurt? No, it's... It is my arm. It is all right. Oh, Paul, look. It is the, nothing. There's a man running away. Do you recognize him? No, he, he's got a scarf over his face. I can't... Oh, where are you going? Stay here, Steve. I'm going after him. Paul, don't be a fool. He's got a gun. Take a look at Ferdy's arm. I'll be back in a minute. Oh. Oh. 
Ferdy, are, are you badly hurt? No, no, no. The, the bullet must just have grazed my arm. Oh, dear, uh, it's bleeding. Uh, 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 take your jacket off. Uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, now, wrap this scarf round your uh, arm. No, no, no. It is nothing. It is not now very do painful. do as I tell you. Take your jacket off. Very well, but it, it, it is nothing to worry about. But, uh, who would do such a thing, Mrs. Temple? It is terrible. Now, keep still. Now, R- wrap the scarf round. That's it. That's Oh, well, my husband's coming back. Did you see him, Paul? No, I didn't. The trees are pretty thick on the other side, and there's a mountain of snow. He just... he just seems to disappear. How are you, Ferdy? Oh, I, I, I am all right. Oh, you really, Mr. Temple? Oh, come on, sit by Mrs. Temple. No, no, no. I, uh... I'm going to drive. Oh, um... I think we'd better go back to St. Moritz. Darling. Yes, of course. Oh. What's that you've got there, Paul? It's a cigarette case. I think our friend must have dropped it. Are there initials on it? Well, there's an inscription. Look. To V, with love from J. V? Mm, I know what you're thinking, Steve, but I can't see Vince shooting at anyone unless it's from behind a camera. Ferdy, I'm taking you back to St. Moritz. Hello, Mr. Lonsdale. Margaret's with me. We've got a table over there. Would you care to join us? Oh, thank you. That's very kind of you. Careful, it's very slippy by the side of the rink. Oh, hello, Mrs. Temple. We saw you sitting on your own and we thought perhaps you'd like to join us. Thank you. You been skating? Not this afternoon. I'm afraid I've been terribly lazy. Is your husband in the village? Yes, he had one or two things to do. Mrs. Milborn? Yes. You are wanted on the telephone, madame. Uh, shall I take it, madam? No, no, I'll take it. Is there a telephone down here? Yes, madame, there is a call box just inside the door on your left. Oh, thank you. I'll come with you, Margaret. No, no, there's no need, Morris. I'm afraid Margaret's feeling the strain. Yes. If I'd been at home, I'd have done my best to stop her from coming out here. But why? Because in spite of those telephone calls and in spite of what Margaret says... You don't believe Carl Milborn is alive? Well, if he is, then who was the dead man? And why was he wearing Carl's clothes and carrying his papers? As the politicians say, that's a good question. They only say that when they know the answers. Do you know the answers, Mrs. Temple? No, I'm afraid I don't. But then I'm no politician. Carl was in Geneva on a perfectly straightforward business trip to see Julia Carrington. For the life of me, I fail to see why he should have become involved in all this mystery. Mrs. Temple, tell me, what does your husband make of it? I mean, what does he really think? He must have some idea by now of what's behind it all. I'm afraid, like most husbands, Paul doesn't always confide in me. I don't believe that. (laughs) I'm afraid you are a politician after all. Oh, no. Oh, hello, here's Margaret. She... She certainly looks worried. Yes, she does. What is it, Margaret? It was a call from London. It's my housekeeper, Mrs Rhodes. She's had an accident. Something went wrong with one of the fuses, and and she tried to mend it, but unfortunately the silly woman... Is she badly hurt? Well, she's had a very nasty shock, I'm afraid. I'm going back, Morris. I'm leaving first thing tomorrow morning. Do you have to? Or ten to one, there's nothing you can do when you get there? Well, there probably isn't, but I'll feel terribly guilty if I don't go back. You know best, my dear. Would you like some tea? Yes. Yes, I think I would. Mrs. Dimple? Yes, thank you. Waiter. Kellner. Is that you, Paul? No, this is Danny. Oh. Hello, Danny. Hello, Steve. How are you? I'm, uh, I'm all right. You don't sound all right. Look, can I have a word with Paul? I'm sorry, he's not here. I've been expecting him all afternoon. As a matter of fact, when I heard the phone ringing, I thought that was... Oh, wait a minute. He's just arrived. Steve, I'm sorry, I'm so... Who's on the phone? Danny Clayton. He wants to talk to you. Oh, thanks. Hello, Danny. Hello, Paul. I just wanted to say how sorry I was about this morning, about the lunch date. Oh, that's all right. Is, is Miss Carrington better now? Yeah, she's quite recovered and full of apologies, as usual. She wants to know if you and Steve could have dinner with us tonight. Well, it's rather short notice, isn't it? Well, I know, but 
Well, try and make it if you can. Ask Steve. See what she says. All right. Julius asked us to dinner. Would you like to go, Steve? It's up to you, darling. All right, Danny. Um, eight o'clock. How's that? That's great. We'll look forward to it. See you then. Bye. Goodbye. Paul, I wondered what on earth had happened to you. Where have you been? I've been very worried, darling. Yes, I'm sorry, dear. I should have phoned you, but I've been very busy. Steve, you don't happen to have seen Lonsdale this afternoon? Yes, I had tea with him and Mrs Milbourne. Did you? She's going back to London. Her housekeeper's had an accident. She's very upset about it. Oh? When is she leaving, do you know? Tomorrow morning, I think, early. Although I believe there is some difficulty about getting her a reservation. I see. Paul, what is it? Hmm? Oh, um, nothing. I was just thinking... I'm going to have a bath, Steve. Will you run it for me? Yes, all right. You're up to something, Mr. Temple. Ah, here you are at last. I went back for my shoes. I can't wear these boots in the house. <laughs> well, jump in, then. Right. I'll sit beside you. Um, that's, that's fine. It. Mm. Um... How long will it take us? About 15 minutes, sir. Oh, then we're late, Steve. It's nearly 8 o'clock now. I've never seen it snow as hard as it did this morning. <laughs> uh, we're just coming to the entrance of the Villa Sobolini, sir. It's over on the right. Oh, thank you. Oh, yes, I, I can see the gates. I shall open the gates, sir. Right. Oh, it's very cosy in here. I should be sorry to get out of the car. <laughs> I don't think it's as cold outside as it looks. It couldn't be. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't seem to be able to get the gates open. No. He's coming back. I'm sorry, sir. I cannot get the gates open. They're blocked with snow. No. Oh. Uh, how far is the villa? Uh, you can see the lights through the trees. It will take you about two or three minutes, unless you get to wait while I clear the snow. Mm, it'll be much quicker to walk, I imagine. I'm afraid it will, sir. What about it, Steve? Yes, all right. Uh, what time shall I pick you up, sir? Oh, about um, 10.30. I shall have the gates cleared by then and drive right up to the house, sir. Thank you. Ready, Steve? Yes, I'm ready. The snow isn't too bad to walk on. Nice and crisp. Mm. It's a lovely night. Yes. What are you thinking about, Paul? Uh, nothing, 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 Steve. I was just thinking, that's all. What happened this afternoon? Well, I met a man called Schmidt. He's a colleague of Walter Nider's. We went back to his office and I made one or two phone calls. As a matter of fact, I spoke to Sir Graham. Sir Graham? Mm. Amongst other things, I wanted to know how Dolly Brazer was getting along. Oh, and how is she? I'm glad to say she's going to be all right, but they're keeping her in hospital for a week or so. Has she made a statement yet? No, but Sir Graham seems to think that she will. Apparently, she asked to see me again yesterday and... Steve, did you hear that? What was it? I could have sworn I heard someone calling. Listen. There you are. Wait, it sounds as if someone's hurt. Where's it coming from, Steve? I, I think it's over there, near those bushes. You stay here, darling, on the drive, then if I need any Oh, no, help... no, I, I'm going with you. Well, then keep close behind me. Paul, what's that down there? Hmm? On the ground by that bush. It's a knife. There's blood on it. Sounds as if... Wait a minute. Stay where you are, Steve. Yes. Over here, Steve. And be careful, it's very slippery. Now, I found him. Look, he's almost buried underneath the snow. Who is it, Paul? I don't know. I can't see his face. Give me a hand, Steve. We've got to try and 
get him out of this snow. Yes. Uh, now, look, if, if, if you push the snow over the other side, I, right. I'll try and lift his shoulders. That's it. Now, don't strain yourself. That's better. Steve. Oh. Look who it is. It's Vince Langham. Vince, are you badly hurt? Can you hear me? Paul, do you think we ought to move him? Don't you think it'd be better if I went up to the house? Yes. I'll go. Yes. Is that your ball? Yes, now, don't worry. We'll soon get you out of here. Steve's going up to the house for no, help. No, wait. I, I want to tell you something. What is it? Uh, what do you want to tell me? I, I want to tell you about... Carl. Well, go on, Vince. This business first started... With Carl Milborn and... Yes? And... Too young to die. In the fifth episode of Paul Temple and the Geneva Mystery, Paul Temple was played by Peter Cook and Steve by Marjorie Westbury. Production for the BBC was by Martin C. Webster.